Good morning. Myself Prakash Vinod, Head of Smart Manufacturing and Precision Machine Pool Development Activities of CMTA Bengaluru. The warm welcome to all speakers and participants of this webinar, which is, fo which is focused on benefits of Industry 4.0 for SME industries. This webinar is conducted by uh, Smart Manufacturing Development and Demonstration Cell of CMTI. In short, we are calling SMDDC, which is a common engineering facility center of Samarth Udyog's platform of Department of Heavy Industry, Ministry of Heavy Industry and Public Enterprises, Government of India. This event is very special to us as it is conducted under the aegis of Amrut Mahotsav celebrations to commemorate completion of 75 years of Indian independence. Thank you. And a warm welcome to all of you. And uh, I request to you all uh, to keep yourself unmuted and uh, you know maybe your videos also off uh, uh, and uh, kindly listen uh, this thing. And if any, uh, uh, if you have any noise or echo problems, uh, request you to kindly un uh, you know mute yourself. Uh, uh, your microphone and all, so that I think the eco problems will be less. So with this, uh, uh, myself Prakash Vinod and uh, I am center head uh, uh, looking uh, uh, into the vertical CMTI verticals on smart manufacturing industry 4.0 and also uh, precision machine tools and machine tool aggregates. So uh, I will be uh, giving uh, the first uh, talk, uh, which is basically uh, the introduction uh, to the smart manufacturing industry 4.0 and uh, I will touch upon a few slides on uh, why it is so important for MSME in our country uh, to adopt this industry 4.0 practices so that I will touch upon so that uh, so with this I will start my uh, presentation uh, just uh, so, uh, just one slide about uh, CMTI. Uh, why CMTI uh, is looking into this uh, propagation, development, and propagation of SD four point zero and smart manufacturing uh, solutions for the country. So. Uh, CMTI, uh, I think most of you may be aware that we are a R&D organization in advanced manufacturing and presently we are coming at the Department of Heavy Industry, uh, Ministry of Heavy Industry and Public Enterprises and uh, CMTI role uh, since inception is to you know, develop the advanced manufacturing technology and also see that it is implemented in, uh, you know, in the Indian manufacturing industry. So since our inception, uh, we have been working that and initially we started with uh, uh, working on machine uh, technology, applied uh, technologies, R&D technology which are supporting us like uh, blue power technology, NC technology, CNC technology, CAD CAM CAE and all. Uh, later part, uh, somewhere in 90s, uh, but machine tools, uh, we have been, uh, I think I am getting some because I request you, some of you uh, uh, who have not uh, muted themselves, kindly mute yourself please. Okay, so in a later uh, part in 90s, uh, we have been also looking into, apart from machine tool technology, we have been also looking into other advanced manufacturing technology like ultra precision uh, engineering, uh, rapid prototyping and additive manufacturing, also nano manufacturing, uh, mechatronics and automation, industrial vision, sensor uh, integrations, uh, uh, engineering, uh, which is basically MEMS based, uh, development of textile machineries, uh, development of uh, aggregates for machine tools and all and also of course uh, we have been also working on uh, smart manufacturing and industry 4.0 from last uh, three to four years so this is our journey so uh, this is uh, this is one of that uh, focus of cmti as on date is uh, you know to develop and demonstrate uh, technologies uh, which is connected with uh, smart manufacturing industry 4.0 and also see that it is implemented uh, to Indian manufacturing industry and uh, especially to MSMEs. So, so how what what mandate we have actually? So as uh, we I mentioned earlier, we are uh, you know part of uh, Department of Heavy Industry, uh, you know, and uh, he, um, Department of Heavy Industry um, has a uh, uh, project or scheme called Samarth Udyog Bharat 4.0 platform. 
so basically it is uh, meant for uh, you know enhancement of competitiveness uh, of in particularly in indian uh, capital goods uh, sector and under this scheme uh, uh, under this program uh, that uh, the, uh, the focus is uh, one of the major focus is on industry 4.0 uh, uh, technologies uh, uh, to be implemented to indian manufacturing industry so uh, under samat udyog bharat 4.0 platform um, um the go uh, government of india has set up uh, uh, now five centers all across india so cmti is one of the common engineering facility center uh, for uh, uh, you know development as well as uh, deployment uh, and implementation of industry 4.0 uh, this technologies and all so uh, apart from cmti we are cmti somewhere in bangalore so i think you are all aware and then uh, there is another center at cmti uh, in bangalore uh, which is iac at iac Uh, which is also looking uh, is a part of Samarth Udyog, and apart from that, uh, uh, one center is at IIT Delhi, and another center is that at Pune, and uh, one center is the IIT Kharagpur. So all together, these all centers uh, have, of course, they are working uh, for uh, have uh, slightly um, uh, different objectives and different way of uh, you know addressing this uh, in, uh, development and implementation of this uh, you know smart manufacturing industry 4.0 technology in our country. and there is some overlapping also so we are working together and seeing that uh, we are able to achieve uh, you know uh, the objective set up under the samarth udyog scheme so cmti as uh, you know as um, our center is called smart manufacturing demo and development cell and uh, what is our focus actually the uh, one of the focus is that we are setting up a production based smart factory uh, with its digital twin which is also looking the digital twin is uh, for basically for design production and performance all together and uh, we are working in the domain of uh, metal cutting uh, additive manufacturing seed metal cutting these are uh, areas where we are addressing and uh, <coughs> this is a platform also as uh, we are creating a platform where development uh, as well as testing and validation of uh, industry 4.0 solutions and products are feasible so this solutions could be from uh, cmti itself or it could be also from other uh, uh, companies uh, startup and private um, companies who are uh, working on that so <coughs> we are uh, focusing on uh, customizing and rolling out of uh, solutions which are uh, basically uh, suitable for msme and uh, cmt also is coming up with a experimental learning center uh, which is uh, we will catering for academia as well as for industry um, uh, people so that uh, they develop necessary skills uh, for in industry 4.0 uh, through experimental learning so this is the way uh, we are looking into that so now coming to that my topic is basically uh, you know the introduction of industry 4.0 smart manufacturing so i will quickly go through that so so i think uh, most of you uh, may be aware that uh, now it is arena we are in the arena of industry 4.0 so definitely there is the industry before industry 4.0 there is industry 3.0 industry 2.0 industry 1.0 so the first industrial revolution industry 1.0 uh, it is uh, started by the end of 18th century by the advent of steam power so i think we know that you know that uh, as the steam driven uh, machines came engines and all uh, came and that that was driving the, in the uh, industrial revolution first industrial revolution then uh, the second industrial revolution almost has, it has taken 100 more years that is by end of 19th century there was the advent of electrical you know electrical machines or electrical energy how to use it for you know um, manufacturing and uh, production uh, lines and all so how to do some uh, um, uh, mass production or uh, uh, using electrical uh, this thing so based on electrical energy so that was that and then later uh, by quarter fourth of 19th century uh, 20th century that is somewhere 1975 to uh, onwards uh, there was a lot of work on electronics uh, devices and all uh, uh, including robots and it also was introduced to production plcs and all uh, cnc sticks came so those, those started driving you know uh, of uh, automatic production uh, like, uh, which are uh, you know, cnc cnc control and now uh, i request i think people to mute yourself please uh, okay then came the you know we are in 21st century it came the industry industry 4.0 where uh, how it is different than the previous one is that uh, now it is uh, you know iot internet of things cyber physical systems augmented reality real time intelligence uh, these all get into machine learning these concepts uh, which are there from different domain uh, of uh, like uh, computer science and all uh, also and uh, mechanical engineering plus electronics electrical 
all these domains got merged into that and now people are talking of cyber physical system like a machine uh, we are looking into a, you know a physical machine plus the virtual machines which can can connect to each other uh, like a digital twin sort of thing and uh, informations uh, they flow seem seamlessly uh, from one machine to other machine they are connected to each other and these all informations are available to the cloud which is uh, which could be based on internet so like that and there are so many decision making processes automatic which are driven by machine learning and artificial intelligence so these are something uh, you know that is slightly different than the normal automation uh, which has happened through cnc plc and all so this is uh, about industry 4.0 so now why why we require that so now i think you all know that we are in the arena of global competition so so we have to compete with uh, you know uh, indian manufacturing industry has to compete globally and the uh, and the cost of the product has to be lower and quality has to be very good and the complexity also we have to address if we should come out with uh, i think you may be knowing that uh, you know a lot of uh, you know things earlier that one model to other models like you take a car so earlier it used to take so many years for people to bring another car other model of the car you know from the same company nowadays nowadays you are aware that you know in a year so many new things are being introduced right so people are looking into you know personalized products they are looking into some complexity and all different domains of things are coming into machines and all so that so if you have to address complexity at lower cost and also if you want to satisfy uh, customer and to compete globally the industry 4.0 this gives you a platform where digi digitization digitalizations and connecting everything assets and optimizing everything and reducing the cost is possible so this is the only way we have to go forward no when we are talking of industry 4.0 so i think you are aware industry 4.0 is basically a concept it itself is not a technology so industry 4.0 is based on a multiple technology which is driving it but essence of all these technologies which are uh, coming out of the industry 4.0 there are some basic thing uh, design uh, principles which uh, it is addressed so one thing is that the first one is that it's it is basically the interoperability so see it is like like all these things we are looking into cyber physical system where they can connect to each other you know all devices or machines and all they can connect to each other so that is the way we are looking into industry 4.0 of products and solutions then second one is the virtualization so definitely when we are talking i told you cyber physical system so we are looking into always when we have a physical things there is a virtual system which is helping you to do many things it can help you to do digital twin based uh, uh, analytics or it can help you to do augmented reality sort of things so it is it is also essence one of the most important uh, design principles we are looking decentralization is another uh, uh, principle so where we are looking so we are looking into uh, auto auto autonomous decisions like you know people are talking of edge based analytics where the decision making can take place near the machine itself so machine needs to be more more autonomous and all and the decision making and so many real time decisions can be taken at uh, at asset level only rather than taking at centralized level so that is the way we are looking into that real time all these things has to happen real real time so that uh, we have to see that uh, the real time decision making real time analytics is possible and uh, service orientation is one of the most important things and the system all whatever products we are bringing or solutions should be modular you know because things are changing very fast if it is hardware and all so you should be able to connect to multiple uh, software or interfaces and all so it should not become obsolete so because things are changing fast so flexible uh, you know modular systems we are looking into when we are talking of industry 4.0 products and solution so now let us see what are the technology pillars i was telling you that plenty of technology pillars uh, there we have listed nine nine only but uh, uh, there could be uh, you know still more and uh, it can be added so because industry 4.0 is standing on multiple technology pillar pillars i have listed nine so we can have think of more also not not issue so let us see what are the things so uh, simulation augmented reality virtual reality mixed reality is one of the pillar actually where we have to look into that uh, you know uh, this thing it is uh, you know propagating the industry 4.0 technology the other one is horizontal and vertical integration that where that things are connected horizontally and vertically in a factory industrial internet of thing iiot it is must you know if you are looking into industry 4.0 platform this autonomous robots robots and agvs they are also uh, play a big role you know as a this thing in industry 4.0 analytics data analytics particularly big data analytics uh, happening in real time plays a big role 
and uh, which is also driven by uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence. So these are things which are playing a bigger role. Supply chain is, uh, you know, systems are uh, helping a lot in, uh, you know, on that uh, industry 4.0 meeting objectives. Additive manufacturing up becoming much more, uh, you know, mm, uh, important when we are talking of industry 4.0, because in this, you know, additive, we can grow the component based on the design and you can do it faster. So this uh, plays a big role and cloud based technology, cloud based uh, storage, cloud based analytics uh, also plays a big role. So these are things uh, which we have to look into uh, that when we are talking of industry 4.0, uh, uh, this thing. And of course, cyber security, if a lot of things are happening on cloud, definitely the securities and all the things we need to address so that the information reaches to the right people uh, only. It is uh, it should not be you know, um, going to wrong people. So that is the way we look into that. It could be at factory level, within a factory, or it could be across uh, you know, different organizations also. So now I will just quickly go through the, the, all of this, uh, what, what do we mean? So that, uh, what is what do we mean by horizontal integration? So now if you are thinking of a like a, a production process or, you know, a, like a workshop and all, where all the activities which are connecting, you know, machine uh, to uh, one machine to other machine or even to the uh, sort of like a, a central controller and all, uh, which is basically regarding one, one vertical uh, of, uh, you know, manufacturing process. So that is like a production. So they are all which is connected to each other. They are all production related processes, uh, just for example. And that is a call. If you connect everything in the production, it is called horizontal integration in, in that particular uh, layer. Now in, in, a, in, a, in a factory or in, a, in an organization, uh, and when we are talking of smart manufacturing, there could be multiple you know, layer, logical layers, not only production, we'll have design, you will have uh, you know, um, uh, sales and marketing, you will have IT, you will have quality assurance and all. And so these all, if you connect, you know, all these layers, if you connect uh, to the production process, uh, to all these things and take maximum benefit out of that, so that will lead into smart manufacturing and that is called vertical integration also. So it is very important that when we are talking of industry 4.0, there is a horizontal integration as well as vertical integration. So next, uh, other thing is that uh, smart sensors. So they are playing a big role now, I think, sensor, because if, if by sensors you can know what is happening, what is happening on your assets uh, through sensors only. So this it is uh, very important that sensors are uh, smart. And uh, you know the, what is sensor, you know all, but a smart sensor is that uh, device, which, which is taking inputs from the physical environment or your assets, sir. And um, also it is doing some predefined, it, it has capability to do some predefined functions uh, uh, and can take some decision based on uh, whatever you, you have already fed into that. Some intelligence, some uh, uh, logics or some um, uh, programming you might have done based on the sensor, uh, what it is, uh, this thing. So some decision making is possible through smart sensor also. Uh, so this is called smart sensor and it is playing a big role in, you know, IoT and all evolutions and all. So now let us see if you see uh, why I have uh, tried to put emphasis on that, that because there are variety of sensors. It is possible when we are talking of, you know, IoT industry 4.0 and all. So it is, uh, there are some sensors like temperature, which uh, requires data sampling at very low frequencies. Okay. Maybe up to 10 Hertz and all even lower than that also, but there are other sensors also pressure, flow, force, torque, uh, vibration, uh, force, uh, uh, acoustic emissions, displacement, velocity, even RFID, uh, you know, you know, in the, that information and uh, the scopes and all, it is possible depending upon the industrial application to look into all the sensor. And if you see, they require data sampling at different frequencies. So starting from hertz, they require data sampling in megahertz, kilohertz also, like vibration sensor or acoustic emission oh. sensor. Vibration sensor they require data sampling in uh, hello, uh, request you please not to talk please uh, during when uh, this, uh, this thing is going up, please mute yourself. If you have any questions, you can put forward in chat box, please. So you have to see when we are talking of this, uh, you know, smart sensors. So we have to see that is all the data, you know, from different devices are connected and processed in proper way and at proper place, uh, either at edge or at cloud and, and these informations are, uh, you know, used in uh, for decision making and, uh, and uh, control. So there are various ways of, you know, getting uh, different type of sensors, uh, you know, into, you know, for decision making. So you can have, you know, some of the things you can uh, take through PLC. Some of the informations are available directly from CNC and all. 
and uh, you have the local server where you can take data you have uh, uh, iot with the iot inf on uh, interface and all you can take it to internet and all so there are various possibilities various ways of uh, handling these sensors and all and also the analytics portion you can do at uh, you know at edge near the machine or you can do at local server or you can do at you know even sometimes in cloud some process information some decision making you can do at at uh, clouds also <laughs> So this is the way. Then uh, IoT, I think you know, it is the heart of uh, industry 4.0. So if you IoT, Internet of Things, uh, if you take it for industrial manufacturing environment, it becomes IoT. So that is the way we look into that. So it is basically, uh, you know, uh, it is uh, based on connecting all the assets, uh, all the devices, uh, and uh, taking the information, uh, you know, uh, seamlessly to the cloud and all. So this is the way, uh, and uh, you can do further the decision uh, making. Or some analytics there. So this is called IoT, where you are from a manufacturing environment. You are taking the informations uh, in a connected system. You are taking all the information and putting it to the cloud, uh, either uh, processed information at uh, uh, which is happen at edge, or even the raw data you can take to the cloud and you can do some analytics based on case to case basis. So this is the way we look into that. Next one is the robots and cobots so they play the also big role particularly for automatic uh, or making uh, you know automation in your manufacturing systems uh, when you have to take the you know, your raw material from uh, one pl place to and then take it to one other machine from one machine to other machine or you need to uh, do some uh, quality assurance and uh, taking it for inspection and all these plays or even for from where you take it to warehouse and uh, to and fro. So these all are happening through this uh, robots, cobots, and AGV. So they play a uh, big role. So uh, there is uh, some difference between uh, you know uh, robots, autonomous robots, and cobots. So based on case to case, we have to take a call whether we should uh, use autonomous robots uh, or cobots. So what is autonomous robot? Is a robot that performs behavior uh, in a different type of task with high degree of uh, automations, right? So it is. Uh, supposed to do similar type of activities uh, you know and uh, with uh, very fast speed and uh, you know uh, at uh, this thing so there that uh, robots can be used but uh, robots uh, cannot work uh, with uh, human you know in the, with the human people uh, that also you cannot interacting in interacting way we cannot work with human being that is the thing where uh, that it uh, plays out otherwise they are very uh, you know in the, some application they are very much required you know and uh, uh, and uh, it can it can connect two machines right but uh, in the it has to do same thing means if it has to load a job from uh, pal uh, from uh, from agvs to the uh, or pallet of agvs to the machine it will do that the same thing it will keep on doing you know without interventions and all so that way it can work very fast but flexibility is uh, you know sort of thing uh, if you want uh, and particularly when human beings are intervening in between like some, for some assembly work, if you want to use uh, robots for assembly uh, working with you, then uh, uh, robot is uh, you know autonomous robots are not uh, solution. You have to go for cobots. So cobots can interact uh, with human uh, and you know can learn from them and they can uh, uh, they can work in, uh, in contrast uh, of traditional industrial robot. They can uh, they can work uh, um, with safety when, when we are working in the, with human beings, right? So it gives you some greater range of capabilities when we are talking of cobalt. So I think you know that it is used for multiple application like you know automotive or maybe for pick and place or even for for machining robots are used for painting robots are used for uh, even for drilling robots uh, welding robots are used. So plenty of applications are there where robots can be used for assembly work. Uh, robots are used uh, plenty in automotive things. So that way. So depending upon that, uh, how what is the application? We can select a robot or a cobot. So is a cobot is a collaborative robot. So which can work with human being with safety. Okay. So AGV. So AGV is uh, like uh, you know the full form that is automatic guided vehicle. It's a basically a mobile robot, and it generally it will follow the marker or the wires on the floor. Uh, and uh, it can use it can have its own vision system or it can take the laser tracking using laser tracking it can do that so it can move on the uh, predefined paths and all so uh, it is uh, widely used in manufacturing industry for transportation of material from warehouse to the machine and machine to the warehouse sort of thing and uh, nowadays uh, you know that agv is also agv is also agv is also are becoming uh, you know quite uh, this thing um, uh, with new technologies like sensors uh, and uh, they, they can use wireless networks. Uh, they can have automatic control, and uh, they can have uh, you know uh, 
sort of like uh, their own guidance systems and all. So uh, the, there are a lot of developments are occurring where that AGVs are much more becoming much more intelligent, right? So now other uh, that uh, pillars of industry 4.0 is uh, basically simulation. Simulation, I think you know everybody. After design, we always do simulation to find out how it is going to perform uh, in the real uh, real world, right? So that is the way simulations are being done. So now the things have come with digital twin. So what is the digital twin? Uh, which is uh, much more uh, this thing. Uh, um, which which is much more uh, making it much more you know uh, important is that that uh, see in this digital twin uh, you know it is we are connecting we are you know we are mirroring the physical. Uh, uh, the world into a virtual model and which can interact to each other means when we are talking of you know virtual model it is taking a lot of inputs and it is based on the physical okay. modeling of the system and it is uh, if we are doing some testing on uh, suppose uh, some trials we are doing on the virtual model it is replicating the physical system in better way you know so because it is it is using the physical modeling it is based on the physical um, uh, um, uh, modeling and it is taking a lot of inputs and in real time it is also taking some inputs uh, which sensors to the from the physical system to the real uh, virtual model so it is much more you know that you know these things and other things we can do that so a lot of tests and other things which is not possible in the physical system we can do parallelly in uh, digital twin so there is a way it, uh, we look into that and the now digital twins are also driven by artificial intelligence uh, data analytics and all so that is the way it is making it things very popular Yeah, so let us see this uh, uh, digital pin, how it works on, it is, uh, you know, it is shown as, you know, for aer aerospace industry. So there is a physical system and there is a digital pin. So, um, although it is a virtual, uh, you know, replica, but uh, also, but this virtual replica is based on the physical modeling of the, um, uh, 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 modeling of the physical system. And also it is connecting the, uh, you know, your physical system uh, to the virtual system uh, through some uh, inputs and all. So that's the way it looks into that. And then in, if you want to do some test, some accelerated test or something, you need not have to disturb the physical uh, system. You can do on the virtual system itself. That's the way it looks into that. So now let us see the argument. Uh, the next thing is that, um, you know, augmented reality and uh, virtual reality and all. So I think you know what is virtual reality because after CAE, computer analysis and all, people like, uh, if you get into that, uh, if you want to virtually want to look into what is happening at that place, that is called virtual reality, where we are getting into virtual model and we are doing some, uh, uh, you know, some, some uh, analysis and all. Augmented reality, how slightly different, it is, uh, what it happens is that, uh, Unlike your virtual reality, it is in augmented reality, it is interacting with the physical system with real time digital information. So, so in that process, the decision making and managing the work procedures and other things are very, uh, you know, become very easy. So this augmented reality can be used for, you know, like uh, assembly. Suppose you have designed a machine, you know, how to assemble the machine. You can, you can, you know, you can give instruction to your supervisor through augmented reality, or even you can, you know, create a video, animated video and all. And you can, you know, uh, you can give it to that engineers need not be present when that, uh, you know, some assembly is taking place. So that is the way it can do. It can be used for even for maintenance work, right? So if you take, like, I will show you the next uh, slide, you can see. So if you take, you know, uh, you know, through a tab or through mobile, if you take, a, you know, snapshot uh, of your, you know, you based on your, you know, augmented reality based software, we take snapshot of the machine. So it can tell you inside the machine what is there. Uh, also, it can, uh, uh, you know, it can give you uh, uh, like, you know, maintenance manual, circuit diagrams. Also, it can connect with IoT and it can tell you the what temperature and where, it, uh, what is happening and all those things is possible through augmented reality. It can connect uh, this uh, through IoT, uh, you know, a gateway and then it can give you real time information also. And also it can help you to uh, take some, uh, you know, some decisions and all in the real time. So this is about that, uh, those techniques. Additive manufacturing, I think you all are aware very well that what is additive manufacturing. So now the thing is that we are trying to come out with uh, quickly with uh, complex 3D parts, right? From design to physical shape. So that is uh, basically 3D printing and it is, you know, additive manufacturing is going to play, uh, uh, play a role. And uh, that's why it is becoming much more popular in this industry 4.0 arena. So we can do, uh, you know, using additive manufacturing, you can uh, easily, uh, you know, light weighting or some, you know, compact designs we can rely. 
So big data and data analytics. So what is big data? I think you are all knowing that, you know, what is data? So data, you know, generally in industrial environment, we have, if you see in an IoT and all uh, implementation, a lot of sensors are there, a lot of informations are uh, flowing uh, through from, because from sensors, from machine to machine and all. So these informations, if you see the quantum of information, how much it is there, multiple sensors, multiple information, multi, uh, multiple uh, high sampling rates and all. So it, uh, it is resulting into high quantum of data, you know, so that data, so that data is quite large. So that's, that's called big data. And there are some tools, you know, to do. And so whether we have this all in the data is, you know, all are, uh, whether is useful, what is, what is to be filtered, we need, it has to be uh, pre-processed before we uh, do for analysis. So that is that is taken care by data analytics. So it plays a big role. So, so, so much data is there, how to organize data, how to filter data, how to process uh, the data and all, uh, and uh, to uh, uh, arrive at real-time decision that is taken care by data analytics. So uh, that's why it is called big data and big data analytics uh, in uh, this thing. And they are playing a big role in industry 4.0. Cloud and cloud computing, I think, uh, you know, initially also I mentioned what is that actually. So now uh, <laughs> when you have assets uh, which are uh, at different geographical place, like you have one factory at uh, Bangalore, one at Pune, one at uh, Delhi, and, uh, um, and if you want to connect to each other to them or other way, you have a factory at Bangalore only, but your boss may be sitting, uh, you know, uh, not in the same, uh, uh, even in Bangalore, he may not be in the same factory, he may be at some other place. Uh, sitting at uh, your factory, maybe uh, somewhere in Iswantpur and, uh, you know, your office uh, may be there in somewhere in MG Road, like that. So if it is at different geographical uh, locations and all, and if you want to connect uh, the assets at different geographical locations, then in that place, this cloud uh, that plays a big role, you know, so it uh, across the site, across the company uh, boundaries, you can take the data and uh, the response times also with uh, nowadays with the proper cloud computing softwares and all i think some of things you may be knowing like microsoft azure and all they are supporting that so and amazon and so many people are, are doing that so that the response times are possible in the you know milliseconds and all so these are very important sometimes when you have to uh, integrate different uh, data from different locations and you have to look into so that uh, it gives you much more you know functionality and all so that's why so that various techniques are there for you know uh, doing cloud based analytics and cloud based computing and all so they are all covered under this uh, you know this particular uh, technology pillar Cyber security, uh, last but not the least among all, but I think you know that a lot of information as it is flowing through cloud or internet and all, so you need to have, you know, proper, uh, you know, security layers and all, so that uh, the right uh, right information is reaching to the right people in the manufacturing system. Yeah, yeah. So this is the way we look into that. So that is all about that, uh, you know, this, uh, this thing uh, briefly, I have described about uh, the various pillars of industry 4.0. So smart manufacturing, what is smart manufacturing is that, now we are talking of smart factory, right? So smart factory, all we have connected system, connected machines, and you know we have connected uh, manufacturing uh, things with, with uh, this thing. Now we have different other layers also, like I was mentioning, you know, we have uh, like uh, business uh, systems, uh, uh, we'll have, you have design systems layers. So there are different logical layer. You have supply chain layer, you have the, you know, distribution, you have sales and marketing, you have customer. If you connect all these, you know, all these layers uh, to the, uh, your uh, smart factory, then uh, it, you are achieving smart manufacturing and all. So that's the way we look into that. So some few uh, things, uh, what CMTI has been doing in this area, some few slides uh, that uh, we call success stories, I will be presenting now. So this is, we are setting up a smart factory where we are looking into addressing from uh, raw material, uh, is uh, RFID tagging and then uh, recognition of the uh, component going to different machine through AGV, through robots, and then going for different processing happening, milling, turning, uh, sort of thing and uh, as and when required, then it goes for uh, metrology, uh, you know, uh, which is based on contact uh, or uh, vision based non-contact systems. And then also using probing system like CMM and all, if all parts are well, uh, you know, um, accepted and all, then in that case, it, uh, it is uh, going to, you know, again, uh, offloaded for uh, sending it to warehouse or for storage. So this is the way we look into that. So this is the well or this thing, but in this system, all machines are connected to each other. And of course, there is a uh, you know that uh, in a physical way, and uh, also uh, we have we have a CAD CAM, we have IoT server. They are all you know part of that entire smart factory which are connecting uh, this all. Design design entire design layer is connected with this production, and uh, and uh, from uh, all the machines will have sensors, different type of sensors, uh, either wired or it may be wireless. All these information is flowing back. 
we are able to do a lot of you know sort of uh, analytics and all performance analytics and we are able to do so this is all about that what we are putting up it is basically a production sort of uh, factory at cmti is coming up and it is uh, it is uh, getting ready maybe by end of this year if it will be fully functional so now uh, we have what what are things we have done uh, already that is regarding the smart factory and some technology development so cmti has developed a ultra precision uh, you know turning machine uh, basically uh, for that uh, uh, basically for um, diamond turning diamond uh, turn machining applications and uh, which can produce your you components uh, which are uh, you know optical quality uh, like a mirror sort of finish and metal you can get that is the way we have looked into the machine and in that machine we have uh, you know developed and integrated in cmti entire machine itself is developed at cmti plus this uh, various uh, the modules which are for smart manufacturing and uh, iot we have developed at cmti and we integrated so some uh, so some of the modules uh, which have grouped one one group is on intelligent machine error compensation so using this uh, techniques uh, you know uh, which is basically on real time using artificial intelligence it is using uh, artificial ai techniques we are able to give real time uh, you know positioning error compensation thermoelastic compensations uh, which we, on the machine which are able to do it based on the sensors mounted on the machine in real time so that's the way we have done so it is based on artificial machine learning and artificial intelligence technique likewise we also looked into you know condition monitoring and machine health monitoring machine diagnostics uh, this is some of them are basically real time ai based techniques and uh, also and uh, we can even sensors what are the sensors mounted on machines if any sensors are faulty we can detect uh, spindle and slide health monitoring is possible in real time and all such things we have done and uh, even the process process uh, you know pro, uh, this thing uh, we are able to do that uh, you know uh, we can monitor the process we can we can predict the process in real time using again ml ml techniques ai techniques and all we are able to do so this machine uh, you know it is already done and we have uh, demonstrated and also we have supplied to customer so let, let us see the module some of the modules output so i was telling you thermoelastic error uh, this thing that uh, compensation of machine will have thermoelastic error as and when machine is running uh, with various uh, heating uh, loads and all so if we have if we have done uh, you know using uh, neural network and all we have uh, created uh, you know machine learning and uh, uh, that and then then later using that uh, we have real time we are able to compensate that uh, thermoelastic error which is happening in the machine so the errors which are of magnitude of 50 micrometer we have reduced to 3 micrometer only using this technique so this one and then we implemented this in our machine and uh, we are able to see the accuracy and all we are able to achieve within 1 micrometer that's uh, size accuracy and all so which is generally not possible in uh, machines and all in, uh, it was it will go beyond that because of thermoelastic error so we are able to do that so we have demonstrated successfully on the machine the other area which where the cmti has developed uh, various technology is to how to convert i think you know that in india there are plenty of legacy cnc machines legacy machines are there which are not even cnc uh, how to convert that so we have come out with the various techniques and all uh, for the, you know converting this legacy machine into cnc machines so by sometimes by mounting some external sensors and all also we are able to do and with that we can do some uh, you know thermoelastic behavior we can uh, monitor health monitoring we can do vibration uh, condition monitoring we can do energy monitoring and energy based uh, uh, solutions we can provide and even quality quality assurance also we can do that using vision based uh, uh, external uh, you know um, cameras and all even uh, we try to convert uh, we have converted uh, that additive uh, legacy additive machines uh, you know uh, into smart machines then uh, we have created some apps and all using the mobile apps we can control the machine we can monitor the uh, additive processes and all which is all uh, is a basically technology demonstrators and which uh, we have uh, you know successfully done at cmti so now the last uh, one or two slide before i hand over uh, talk to my next colleague is that uh, what are the you know what, see we are looking into you know benefiting msme uh, in, in this webinar and also what are the basic you know uh, what we in this are uh, challenges and all uh, you know to for msmes to do that so so i think you uh, all of you may be knowing that msme sector is the backbone of our national economic structure and about uh, 63.4 uh, million units spread all over uh, india they are working in different industry sector they are msmes basically 
and uh, they are providing a huge employment around 120 million persons and also contributing around 40 percent of the overall sports of the uh, this thing and also contributing around 33.4 percent of manufacturing output so they are very very important for us and they, they need to be you know uh, much more productive and uh, so that is a uh, basic thing so what are challenges we are looking into that before you know our other experts they talk on that so the if you see the most of the msme you know a lot of machines are there plenty of machines are there which is not uh, you know industry four ready means they are industry two point or industry three point uh, you know uh, uh, generation machines right and uh, <laughs> that uh, they they uh, actually the infrastructure uh, upgradation for digit basically you see in industry 4.0 and all the basic thing is that you should be able to digitization digitization is very important so some of most of the msmes they don't have basic infrastructure for upgrading it for digitization itself so once we digitize we then only we can know what is happening what is happening on the machine so that is a basic thing that is uh, lacking in our country. And uh, uh, as I told you, high volume of legacy machines are there, conventional machines are there, and uh, you know, they are uh, skeptical about uh, initial investment, you know, and uh, they are not very clear about if they put some investment, what is the return on investment, particularly for their type of industry, right, you know, in that way. And uh, <clears throat> also, we should also look into that MSMEs, they are in various industry sectors. So they have various sector requires different type of customized solutions. So there, and then also we should look into that if you, we have visited many places, you know, in MSME, so different type of assets or machines are there. So they have different type of connectivity issues uh, to put, uh, to, to connect them to industry 4.0 platform. Uh, they are uh, skeptical about, uh, because they are small organization, they are skeptical about security issue, whether this information somebody will know. Uh, job creation versus job loss. This is another thing which I call is providing a lot of jobs, right? Yeah, so whether we, it is going to create new jobs or whether it is uh, we are going to you know uh, lead into some job loss. So these are things. And uh, if uh, some but some uh, industry is uh, they are willing you know they to get into this, uh, they are also uh, you know not sure about that. You know how to how to go about that means uh, lack of you know standards and lack of standard solutions. And uh, <clears throat> the, some of the most of the products are not validated. Uh, you know whatever is coming in market, the vendors are there. You know but. Uh, if you ask them, uh, why, is it following some standard or whether it is validated, these are not happening. So definitely we need uh, uh, more test labs, test bed uh, for development, uh, customization, validation and certification of products and solutions uh, in our country so that, uh, uh, you know, MSME finds it much more easier to get into that. So the way forward is digital trans transformation and uh, uh, also cooperation for I I how to use AI uh, and um, uh, ML techniques into digital transformations and all, uh, apart from that setting up new, uh, most uh, test labs and test beds in uh, our country. So see this, some of the challenges, what we are facing, it is not that only India is facing. This is a, you know, that slide, it is showing that something in Germany, how people in Germany, uh, you know, it is uh, slightly older, 2013. So how they face the problem, you know, because the in, in industry uh, 4.0 is, you know, uh, at slightly advanced stage of implementation in, the, in Germany. So they also have problems regarding standardization that how it is adopted for different type of processes, work organization, what products we use, how it is, you know, with different type of business models and how it will do that. And, uh, you know, uh, this, this, this is a common problem even in developed countries. So now uh, this is the last slide of my presentation. So I think, uh, so we should know that, you know, how to get into this year. So first step of industry 4.0, if anybody wants to do is the digitalization is very important. So there is a basic requirement when you want to go for industry 4.0. Then once you are uh, having a digitalization, then you can understand that with sensors and all, what is, you know, what is happening, you know, you can visualize what is happening in your assets. Then you can uh, further, you, you can get into that, why it is happening, you know, you can get into root cause and, uh, you know, find out why it is happening. And then you can go for, then only you can go for predictive and proactive anal analytics and all, and then uh, it can help you to do uh, you know, that uh, optimization and, uh, you know, uh, achieve the results. So these are things, uh, you know, uh, we have to follow the steps. And uh, uh, with this, I end my presentation and I will be requesting uh, the, my succeeding, uh, you know, um, uh, um, speakers who are experts in their domain. Uh, both of them, uh, Mr. Chandramouli, I think he is well known, a very, uh, you know, highly knowledgeable person with uh, 
tremendous amount of knowledge so uh, maybe they can put some thought on this how to how it can benefit and also mr pradeep uh, ajedia so he is also expert in machine tools in the siemens you know uh, uh, he is working in siemens senior manager so we look look into look forward for those uh, talks thank you and if you have any questions uh, please uh, put in chat box and uh, we'll try to address thank you sure. thanks for uh, sharing the detailed presentation on introduction to smart manufacturing and also for sharing the success stories and implementation and challenges for uh, msme industries now i request uh, mr pradeep ajedia uh, to take over uh, he is a senior manager from machine tool uh, area from he is having about 16 years of uh, experience and uh, about uh, 12 years he is working with siemens now i request uh, him to uh, deliver a talk hello good morning everybody good morning sir good morning sir uh, if yeah good morning uh, if anybody can confirm that uh, my screen is visible yeah it is visible sir it is visible not in a full screen yeah so i'll change it to the presentation mode okay. now it is fine okay Uh, we wish if you can speak a bit louder okay okay yeah so good morning everyone once again uh, my name is pradeep ajadia thank you mr reddy for the short introduction and uh, uh, before i start my presentation i would like uh, uh, to uh, tell something uh, uh, whoever is there in the call i hope uh, everyone and uh, every one of this uh, uh, call and their family members are healthy and safe uh, because we are going through a tough time uh, uh, because of this covid pandemic i request uh, each and every one to take utmost care and precautions and follow all the guidelines with regard to the covid thank you for that now let's begin with the presentation so the uh, topic of uh, my presentation is the demands and benefits of industry 4.0 from smes uh we have been uh, hearing this uh, the most uh, trending words like uh, everybody is aware that okay everybody is talking about digitalization industry 4.0 internet of things and uh, but let me tell you that uh, uh, these are not new words for the siemens because uh, we are into the domain for last uh, so many years and uh, whatever the demands of industry 4.0 is there at present we have been offering a similar solution more than 15 years before uh so the uh, and uh, now uh, with with the increase in the demands from the industries uh, uh, we have advanced the those old solutions to the new heights and new level and uh, we have added few more solutions such as cloud computing edge analytics edge computing artificial intelligence big data management etc uh, and all this uh, is possible because of the technological transformation uh when we talk about uh, industry 4.0 uh we should we should not and we should never forget the most important sector of indian economy that is our msme uh, sector and uh, i will be giving a short presentation on the demands of from this small and medium enterprises as far as this uh, integration of industry 4.0 is concerned and the benefits uh, they would get post implementation of industry 4.0 uh at the end of my presentation I, i i would like to cover small of the offerings and solutions that siemens uh, siemens provides uh, as far as the uh, current demand of industry 4.0 is con concerned but uh, uh, let me assure you that i will not flood you with a lot of information and data because uh, when it comes to industry 4.0 we have a wide range of solutions to offer so well i will keep it to the uh, uh, shortest possible way and uh, i will be sharing my contact number and email id at the end of my presentation so if anybody has a specific query or requirement they can reach me out and uh, i can i can provide a, a suitable solution to their requirement before we move forward to the presentation i have an animated video which will give you an overview that uh, how this uh, uh, digital transformation it is taking place and industry 4.0 is uh, implementing uh, uh, 
at this uh, at this stage so let's play the video there is no audio there is no audio still not there no, no, sir, we are not able to hear anything. Still not coming? No. Looks like my audio setting. Is there in YouTube this video? Whether this video is available in YouTube? Oh, yeah, yeah, or maybe I will share it with you. It might not be there. The link you may paste here, sir. We'll try to paste it. Or uh, do you know the audio setting? Default internet, uh, if you say it, default internal microphone, then probably it will pick up. Where it will be, sir? Can anybody help me with this? Sir. Yes. Uh, can you, you, can, you, can, you can play the you can play the video yes. uh, from its direct to no source. Instead of you know, the no, calling sir, from I, uh, Sir, I, I'll try to play the video from my side. Can you please uh, give me the link? The YouTube link. I can play from here. I will have so to the video that. is available on YouTube, sir. Is it uh, Oh, if it is not available, it will not, it will not be available. Ah, that is what, probably the yeah. source file you can try, sir. From here? You are probably close this thing. Hmm. The source file, the, where the video is available in laptop. So this is part of the presentation. The part of the presentation? Yes. Probably, yes. The, preferably, you just minimize this. Where this video you stored, no, sir, is somewhere in the folder. No, this is uh, interlinked with the PPT. Yeah, it is correct. I so agree with the point. Sometimes, it, sometimes really? audio will not sync. Sometimes audio will not sync. Hmm? Probably you can play you the video to, alone. Probably you can play you the video alone that, separately. If you go to that setting for mute and default internal microphone, then uh, it will work. Now we're in, in this uh, meeting only? Yeah, in meeting, uh, next to your mute button, that drop down is there. Click on that drop down and select default internal microphone. I'm sorry, I can't find that. It's near mute, unmute button is there, no, sir. Yes, I can see that. Then uh, next that drop down is there, the triangle. Start video. No, before start video, there is one arrow mark. After that, mute, mute. unmute. Yeah. Yes. So there is a small. If you click that arrow button, there is a, a speaker, microphone, settings. I can't find. After mute, M-U-T-E, after yes. E, there is one arrow mark. Down, it is showing downwards. Correct? This one. 
this one, you right? Click on that. Here you, no, you can no. see microphone, default microphones. Sir, you are able to find. No, no, I am not able to find it. Yeah, there is a mute button is there, right, sir? Yeah, mute button I have found. On the right side, there is an arrow mark. After E, in the mute, after E, there is an arrow mark symbol. No, I can't see that arrow mark also. No, it is there, sir. It is there. One icon is there, arrow mark icon. Just, no, just you are able to start, start screen, window, right? start video, just before start, so there is an arrow mark. No, there, are, there is no hero mark. I'm really sorry for this. <laughs> okay, no issues. Sir, we can... Uh... Pradeep, sir, we... Pradeep, sir? Hello. Yes. You can just give the commentary what it's going on, like, I mean, like, uh, what exactly it is. Because people already know it, you just explain in uh, some background. I will, I, will try, I will try to, yeah, I will try to do one thing. Yeah, I will that's, put my that's, mic that very be... close to the speaker. Okay, fine, no issues. If you have same video on mobile, then you can play on your mobile and keep near the laptop. That will also work. Yes, uh, so that was about the uh, solutions from the Siemens that is called the digital enterprise suit. And uh, uh, on the next slide, you can see that digitalization changes everything. And uh, when I cover the next slide, you will agree to this statement that, yes, really the digitalization changes everything. But uh, before we uh, go to the next slide, uh, there are two quotes which I have uh, uh, taken from Mr. Dell and Mr. Uh, Pieri. Uh, they, they have mentioned that, uh, uh, Mr. Dell has mentioned that, okay, it's all about data. In future, everything is about data, collecting the data, fetching the data from the machine, processing the data, and uh, and uh, evaluating the data and uh, present it in such a way that uh, end customers are benefited out of this data. Uh, so it's all about data, and there is a huge business opportunities available, and uh, uh, in today's era, if we see that there are so many startup companies uh, which are coming up and uh, uh, they are small software companies and uh, they, they are working on this particular project only because they see a huge business potential as far as this data handling uh, uh, is concerned. Second quote is from Mr. Pieri. Uh, he has been mentioning that uh, we have to go along with the technology. If we don't follow the technology, if we don't adapt to the new technology which is available, uh, will fall short and uh, maybe it might happen that okay we may we might disappear from the business so it is always uh, advisable that we we use the latest state of the art, art technology which is available uh, in some of the cases uh, the, the companies who uh, believe in using a technology and innovation and uh, uh, believe in uh, uh, going one step further as far as these innovations are concerned uh, they are the market leaders nowadays so it is better to go ahead of the technology uh, rather following the uh, technology, whatever is available at present. There are already new business models in the internet age and, uh, and uh, these new uh, industries and new business models, they are disrupting, they are disrupting the uh, complete markets and uh, the, the old, old uh, uh, way of working, it's completely vanished. Just to give you some examples, I have covered some. For example, here, 
uh, uh, from bookstore to ebook. Uh, uh, I would like to share my experience here because uh, many of the participants, um, many of the participants, participants, uh, uh, they are already aware that. Uh, uh, back to uh, uh, before 20, 30 years before, we used to read a lot of books. Uh, there were libraries. Uh, we were going to libraries. We pick up the books and uh, uh, there was a concept like uh, uh, library on the wheels, like uh, that the mobile uh, van comes and uh, it carries a lot of books. Uh, so those kind of era was there, but now everything is changed. Now uh, uh, Amazon is uh, giving uh, e-books. Uh, you, you can purchase the e-books. Uh, uh, Kindle is there. There you can have uh, more than 500,000 uh, books uh, available on, on your uh, tablet. So the, the, the complete business model is changed. And uh, now I would say very few people are going to the library uh, just to read the books because everybody uh, with a click of a button, they can download the books. Similarly, uh, we used to hear the music uh, uh, in, uh, in audio cassettes, in, in uh, CDs, DVDs. And now that time is also changed. Now uh, people have, have migrated to, uh, I would say, uh, the streaming. Uh, uh, they can go to the uh, music store and they can, they can directly, uh, directly download the songs and they can play the songs. So they're also the complete business model, old, old way of working, it is completely vanished. Similarly, yellow pages. We used to go through this heavy book uh, where we have to find all the contacts, uh, uh, alphabetic, uh, alphabetically, and it was taking too much time. Now, with the uh, with with new applications such as my hammer and uh, LinkedIn or Google, we we get all these contact details with a click of a button. Similarly, the taxi, uh, the way we were booking the taxis, we were getting the taxis. It has changed completely, uh, and uh, now Uber, Ola, and all these uh, uh, service providers are there, and uh, they also have changed the way we used to operate in the past. So these are some of the examples and uh, uh, this is all about technology. Industry 4.0, uh, Mr. Prakash, we know has covered uh, all the aspects of Industry 4.0 and he has made my job very easy so I can explain his Industry 4.0 very easily. As he rightly mentioned that Industry 4.0, it's not a technology or a product. It's basically the solution that we provide. Okay, uh, uh, so uh, wherever, wherever you already have an existing industry and uh, we help you, uh, uh, we help your industry to digitalize and um, migrate it to industry 4.0. So he already talked about industry 1.0 and 2.0. Uh, let me just give you a short introduction about the industry 3.0. Uh, so industry three and uh, I would say almost every, every one of us has, uh, has uh, lived uh, through this uh, uh, third revolution of the industry and where we have seen that uh, there is a development of the personal computer, uh, uh, worldwide web is there, then uh, Macintosh is there and uh, there are so many other software and hardware companies uh, uh, which, which has emerged and they have given the technology. And uh, past 20 years, uh, we have been seeing that uh, now this uh, CNC controller, uh, PNC controllers, all this automation, robot integration, everything has come into place. Uh, so if you see that past 50 years, we see that, okay, the innovation has happened only for the products. Uh, like uh, earlier when the con first controller was developed, the size of the controller was four feet by three feet. Now the same uh, controller with uh, smart operations, uh, with uh, higher performance, it is of, uh, uh, I would say one feet by one feet. Okay, so uh, so there, there is a technological change as far as the products are concerned in industry 3.0. But now we are already, or we already have entered into industry 4.0. So what is industry 4.0? So whatever the products and technologies that you all already have been using, uh, uh, what we do in industry 4.0 is we collect a lot of information because when, when your uh, machine is, uh, is uh, producing any components, it is, uh, it is producing the components parallelly, it is generating a lot of data. So uh, in industry 4.0, we fetch all this data, uh, we do, uh, so this data is in the digital form. Uh, if you present the data in the same form, it is, no, it is of no use. So what we do with this data is we, we fetch the data, we process the data and we, we uh, write algorithm in such a way that, uh, and, and we put this output of this algorithm on our dashboard. So on dashboard, uh, it gives you a visibility which can enable you to take a smart and fast decision about your business. 
so this will this in turn will benefit you to improve the efficiency of the available resources and it will make your business more profitable and this is what it is required in uh, in today's environment uh, regarding the uh, requirements of the uh, uh, industry 4.0 from the small and medium enterprises let me tell you that the demand from almost all the industry it is very same uh, and uh, uh, like uh, 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 there are there are varieties of industries and there are varieties of segments and there are varieties of uh, i would say the size or scalability of the industries so uh, uh, when we have approached uh, many industries uh, for uh, last uh, so many years we have understood that whatever the requirement that end customer has we can categorize them in four basic requirements so these four basic requirements is one is speed uh, the flexibility the quality and the efficiency so uh, when we ask a customer that okay what they are looking for they are looking for speed so what does it mean by speed so when we approach a, a machine builder then uh, the machine builder has a requirement that okay uh, I'm manufacturing a special purpose machine and my customer is my end customer is asking for a delivery within uh, uh, four months of time. So they have to design, they have to, uh, they have to design a machine, they have to test the functions of the machine and they have to deliver the machine with, with the shortest period of time. So there they ask for the speed. So we help them, uh, we have a software platform where we help them to, to do all these processes in a, in a best efficient way so the time to market can be reduced. When we approach end customer who have been using uh, the machines or who has been running a small plant, uh, there the customer is expecting that, okay, they need more production. So they are, they are talking about the speed as far as the machining is concerned. Uh, they, are, they, are, uh, they want a more output uh, of production from the factory. So there also, it is all about speed. Uh, next is a flexibility. So what is flexibility? Uh, as I, as I took the example of machine building, if this first prototype machine is built and if end customer asks for the, some modification in the same machine, uh, I would say in, in the machine for the next, uh, I would say next order, then this change has to be happened easily. So the solution which we offer to our customers, uh, it has to be flexible enough. So whatever the change the end customer expects that can be implemented flexibly. So the new system has to be flexible. Quality. Uh, as Mr. Prakash Vinod mentioned that 45% uh, uh, of the exports are happening uh, by SMEs. So, and the quality standards are changing. The, the requirement of the domestic market and the international market are changing so rapidly. And uh, even the domestic market is also expecting the quality products nowadays. So the quality comes at first. Uh, so we help them, uh, uh, I would say, integrate our software solutions in such a way that they, they get the highest quality products uh, when when they uh, they get the I would say the overall uh, result of this uh, industry 4.0, and the complete solution has to be most efficient. So uh, whatever the resources the uh, existing uh, industry is having, they have to make the best use out of the out of this. They can't keep adding the number of machines. So they have to make the maximum so use of like the uh, available resources. So, so what we help them. I request you to my, uh, mute, please. Okay, so when it comes to efficient, uh, when, when it comes to, I'm sorry, uh, I request you to mute, please. Yeah, so eff efficiency. So uh, they have to make the maximum use of the available resources. So what we do in this is uh, we give them the o OE monitoring where, where uh, the unconditional machine downtime can be reduced and uh, uh, they can they can take a preventive action so the machine is uh, giving a continuous production and they are prepared if any uh, if machine is uh, uh, going to be under breakdown they they get a notification and uh, uh, they they get prepared themselves for the remedies so all these things uh, the it, it can it can't be done without uh, integration of the uh, information technology security because it is generating a lot of data and data has to be secure so uh, we, we ensure that when we are offering our solutions as a part of industry 4.0, the data is secured and uh, safe with, with, uh, with the user. So what we have observed uh, for last uh, few years is like, uh, 
what we have observed for uh, last few years is uh, technology forces industries to transform. Uh, so uh, uh, we have observed that the products uh, uh, come to life. Uh, it has changed. Uh, earlier, uh, there are there are varieties, and let me tell you that there are varieties of uh, design software providers available in the market. But uh, those industries have only the expertise on in that particular domain, and uh, they only give the solutions as far as design is concerned. There are uh, there are industries uh, who give the uh, ready business models. Uh, like uh, uh, they are they there are some ready-made mo modules available. They have to pick up the module and they can they can build the machine or they can design the machine. So uh, that is one thing. Uh, there are the, the changing the ways the products are realized because. Uh, as, as uh, uh, Mr. Prakash Vinod said that uh, there are complex 3D components with the help of additive manufacturing, uh, the, the manufacturing of 3D, com uh, 3D, 3D components with complex profiles is very easy to build nowadays. Uh, he also mentioned something about the cobots. So cobots is like uh, industrial robots, but industrial robots works with a human. So on one side, the humans are working, other side, the uh, 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 robots are working. So so uh, we give we provide them a safe environment with with the help of which uh, robots and uh, human can work together and as i said the uh, the most and important part of this is a uh, is a cloud based uh, ecosystem so because uh, whatever the products uh, we collect the data it, it is sent back to the design team and if any innovation or uh, a product has to be evolved that can be done very easily When we when we uh, did the thorough analysis of what is happening in the current uh, industry, we came to know that okay, uh, uh, for the entire value chain of a product, we see that there are still some gaps, and we wanted to fill the gaps with the help of our technological solution. So, what is the value chain of end product? So, uh, it starts with a product design, then it goes for the production planning, and then for the engineering, and then products execution. And then it is handed over to the user uh, and then service comes into the picture. So we have categorized into three various uh, steps uh, that is ideation, realization and utilization. So what we have done is with the help of our software solution, we bridge the gap between all these uh, uh, different phases of the, value, uh, of the entire value chain. How do we do this? We have bridged the gap. We have a wide range of software uh, uh, ranges available, and uh, Team Set Team Center is a platform uh, which which help you uh, connect uh, connect the designer uh, uh, and the processes which are implemented to uh, design the machine or build the machine. And uh, with that, there is a transparency maintained across uh, different phases of the entire value chain, and. Uh, and then they get a final product, which is, uh, I would say, uh, the virtual product. It is, uh, I would say, 85 to 90 percent of the real product. From services, all the feedback goes to the design team. So if the product has to be upgraded or innovated in a better way for the next batch, that can be done very easily. We also, uh, with our strong software portfolio, we also ensure that uh, you get a digital twin of the entire value chain. So what is a dig uh, digital twin of the entire value chain is like, uh, and with, with the help of this, what you do is, say for example, if you are uh, a machine builder, then uh, then you can have a virtual machine, which, which can simulate the functions of the real machine. So uh, maybe in future, you can have a new business model that you can sell the real machine, Plus, you can sell the virtual machine also to the end customer. What end customer is benefited out of this? When the real machine is in production, and if they want to set up a new component for the for the next requirement, then using the virtual machine, they can they can set up everything in advance. And when the next requirement comes, they they can start I would say start setting up on the real machine, and time for execution for the next production can be reduced. So uh, this is called a digital twin, and uh, in future you will see that okay, you will have a, a, a virtual machine also as a part of the real machine. Uh, uh, hello, Mr. Pradeep. I am Prakash. You know, yes. Uh, uh, yes, sir. So, uh, so how long I think your uh, talk now? I think can you? Forty-five uh, minutes. Sir. Pardon? Five minutes. 
five minutes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, please. Yes, yeah. yes. Sir. Try to wind up in okay. five minutes. Yes, sure, thank sir. You. So I have uh, throughout my presentation, I have been categorizing the customer as a machine builder as well as a machine user. So Siemens provides a solution as a machine builder. And uh, if you are a machine user, uh, so that also our software solution can be used for machine user also. Uh, as I said that I don't want to flood you with a lot of information about the offerings and solutions, but uh, just to give you an overview about uh, the products that we offer as a part of the design planning engineering, I would like to highlight some of the software solutions which we offer. Uh, so Team Center, NX and Sim Center and uh, Metro Graphics are part of product design. Technomatics and NX uh, is uh, for manufacturing. It is also uh, a part of a production planning. And automation uh, TI, TI portal, it is generally used for engineering the uh, products. And uh, we have a wide range of uh, hardware uh, uh, products available as uh, Symmetric uh, PLCs, Cinemeric uh, controllers, and uh, Cinemeric integrator as a part of execution. And then comes to the services where we offer a cloud-based uh, 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 and edge analytics uh, solutions as a part of the services. So with, with all these solutions, what we achieve is the, the whatever is required from the end customer, that is their, their speed, flexibility, quality, and efficiency without compromising on the security. So with this, uh, uh, we realize your digital transformation with the digital enterprise suite, and which will enable you that the future will be yours. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Padi Bajedia, for uh, giving a valuable talk from uh, Siemens' perspective on uh, Industry 4.0. Uh, uh, maybe you. those who have questions, uh, maybe in the chat box you can uh, post it. Our speaker, uh, Pradeep Bajedia, will be answering there. Now I request uh, 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 the other speaker before uh, uh, inviting him. I just try to give a small introduction about. Uh, his experience. He is uh, Mr. A. M. Chandramouli. He has uh, four decades of uh, industrial career and he holded many top management and leadership positions in various uh, diversified industries such as machine tools, mainly uh, Sterak and Mekino, then uh, electrical industry, Lap and uh, Cooper, then consumer durables, mainly Hitachi, then uh, consumer products, Unilever and trucks, Tata Motors. He has also contributed to the industry and society through his current and uh, former positions. Uh, currently, he is uh, the committee chairman for the Industry 4.0 program for uh, BCIC, and he is the committee leader for the Industry for Industry 4.0 program for CII Karnataka, and he is a subcommittee leader for uh, CGSC Industry 4.0 program. And he's a former uh, uh, member, and he also holded many uh, positions like chairman, president for IMTMA's, uh, uh, IMTMA, CIA, and other uh, chamber, uh, other Swiss India Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Now I request uh, Sri A. N. Chandramoli to give a valuable talk uh, to our uh, participants. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Vinod. Thank you, Mr. Reddy. Thank you, my colleagues. Mr. Padeep from Siemens. It's a great pleasure to be here today. And uh, with the second wave, I think we need to once again seek new methods of managing our businesses, especially the small and medium enterprises. My preceding speakers gave a lot of input on the technology and the solutions. I would like to focus on the small and medium enterprises. The micro is also part of it, so MSME we call it. Let me share a small deck presentation to explain some case study and my own thoughts. I hope I am audible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Audible, sir. Yes, sir. Is the screen coming up, sir? Uh, yet to load, sir. Has it loaded now? Yes, yes. 
You are able to see industry 4.0 for MSME. Yes, sir. Make it a full screen, sir, so that we can. Yes, I am going to do that. Yes. Is the full screen visible now? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. So today, when Dr. Vinod asked me last week, I was thinking, you know, our customer today is a small and medium enterprise for today's webinar. So I want to share a few thoughts and concepts. Much have been covered already in the last two, one and a half hours. But the benefits focused on the small and medium enterprises will be my uh, specific focus. But more than that, the challenges and solutions. And then I recommend what is called an appropriate smart factory. Smart factory is one subset of smart manufacturing, as Dr. Vinod mentioned. But the appropriateness is extremely important, and I would like to cover that point so that more and more MSMEs are willing to adopt and adapt the new technologies. Today, you know, they're a little scared when they listen to these uh, jargons of nine technologies. So I'd like to minimize the jargon and go into the real implementation. But before that, I just want to give you a small, uh, I'm just trying to minimize my side window, which is coming there. Yeah, it's gone. Um, a motivation from my own side, when Bangalore Chamber spoke to Finance Minister, Honorable Finance Minister Nirmala, Nirmala Sitaraman, we told her that if you want to introduce a productivity link scheme, you have to first of all link not just the productivity, but the MSMEs to their respective OEMs. For example, Tata Motors, TVS Motors, Toyota, Tafe, you know, of, and the various industries in machine tool industry or automobile industry, name it, whatever. 70 to 80 percent of the value addition is with the small and medium enterprises without any doubt. I, I, I presented to her a hub and spoke model. And this is very familiar to all of you. And we know it as a tier one, tier two, tier three model as a normal supply chain concept. But why not look at even our digital transformation and automation projects under industry 4.0 in this manner? Instead of just frightening the SME, MSME saying that, you know, you have to learn technology, you don't have the skill, blah, blah, blah. Just link them to the respective OEMs. What is the reason? Because a heavy interdependency on this business success for both the OEM and the MSME. Today, 90% of MSMEs are in the supply chain of OEMs in India. Only the 10% who make the branded products, maybe for the Indian market or the export market. We know it very well, the dependency equation as tier one, tier two, tier three equations. Of course, today the MSME definition of turnover and capex have gone up. So many more have come into that fold. But I'm really restricting to the previous definition of small and medium enterprises, which are below 50 crore kind of people who are really struggling to understand what's going on in the last one year of Industry 4.0 webinars and stuff like that. The two pronged important goals. Am I audible? If somebody should alert me if I'm not audible. Yes, sir. Uh, audible, a consistent, sir. consistent quality on the one hand and on-time delivery on the other hand. If we don't emphasize these two major benefits, I think the SMEs will get scared when they listen to Industry 4.0. The only purpose for which the OEM is giving the order to the SME 1 or SME 2 or SME 3 and SME 4 is because these people have been selected for consistent quality and for on-time delivery. If they deliver in advance, it piles up as inventory in the yards of these OEMs. If it delivered late, the assembly line stops, even without having a Toyota production system, the assembly line stops. If there is a quality problem, there is no time to check as a conventional inspection system or no more used by the automobile industry. It is a direct online, DOL. The components reach the respective stations, not just the stores alone, but it goes to the respective stations. What goes to the stores is perhaps only the standard bought out items. But even them, they go to the tubing system of the respective stations of the shop floor. So I think this is an important point I want to touch as an introductory point to motivate ourselves. If any one SME, let us say SME 2, 3, 4, do not achieve the consistent quality and on-time delivery, then all the orders will flow to SME 1. Can it 
accommodate with its capacity of SME one? No. So who is going to suffer? The OEM. And therefore, it is a mutual interdependency between all these people. Just an illustration to show four SMEs, but there are many, many more SMEs when they serve a Maruti Udyog or a Hyundai or a Tata Motor or TVS Motor or Tafe or for that matter, Volvo or even the machine tool industries which we are talking today. Let me move on to focusing on the technologies of the 10 beehives, the hexagonal diagrams that you see in the colorful picture. I would like to look at the rectangular boxes on the sides of this picture. The first rectangular box I would like to address is the benefits. I hope my cursor is showing you where we are talking. The safety, quality, productivity, cost reduction, uptime guarantee for assets, machine tools, delivery, cycle time, throughput time, flexibility above all. Already our colleague Siemens talked about the flexibility, extremely important. I have seen the Siemens Kalva factory, which is a role model of digital factory for this country. So we don't research for going to Germany or anywhere. We can see role models of digital factory within India. Now, when I talk about all these benefits, they look very familiar to an SME. That these are not, no escape from these points. And we are only looking at the digital technology as an enabling factors. Enabling factors with the backbone of industrial internet of things and all other things which are classified under two major groups called automation and digitalization, in my opinion, can all be grouped under digitalization and automation. And mind you, automation existed even in industry 2.0 and 3.0 in, in its own way. But in the era of customized manufacturing, when the variety is growing, the job shop, the smallest of the micro enterprise, as managing the maximum variety, the setup time changes of the job shop are more challenging than the setup time changes of the tier three, which is more challenging the setup time changes of tier two, which is more challenging the setup time changes of tier one. And therefore, the OEMs is sitting pretty with very few setup time changes. So the gantry, automation, robotics, etc., remain with the purview of the OEM because its setup time changes are very few. In the, in the OEM typically. So the varieties are pushed down the supply chain up to the job shop. So the job shop, mind you, require more and more of these technologies. And what is the reason? Dr. Vinod mentioned about traceability, connectivity, visibility, mobility, and real time. The most important thing in this era of COVID is a mobility. The MSME owner can watch his production data even when he's in at home or when he is in the car. It's a mobile requirement and mobile data generation which is coming to him. Whether it is a Ola car or a Swiggy or a Zomato, we are able to enjoy the mobility. But why can't we enjoy the mobility in our manufacturing systems? And above all, the real time. In the Esther years, we are talking about ERP system which throws up the data after one day or one week or one month. And then people are fighting with each other on Monday morning or sunrise meetings. Rather, in the decentralized era of industry 4.0, ladies and gentlemen, the real time data being, it is a dynamic data which is being fed back to the respective system. As Pradeep mentioned, the design gets the information as soon as there is a failure in the after sale service. Imagine the kind of uh, uh, dynamism in the corrective and preventive action we talk in terms of ISO 9000. All these are possible by knowing what is going on, descriptive data, knowing why it is going on, the root cause analysis, diagnostic data, and knowing what to do in the next time when it happens, predictive, and then finally, how to implement the decision-making process at the decentralized level, at the grassroots of the operator's level. I have seen in Tafe Dudabalapur, you all are welcome to see that. CMTA can arrange a visit, experiential learning after COVID, of course, but they can also do an online workshop. And I'll request my friend and Tafe Dudabalapur to present it. He is the oldest company in Bangalore to implement the industry 4.0. Now, there are many myths to be busted. Most investments are too high and affordable only by large enterprises. At the end of my talk, I am sure you are all convinced it is not so. IT competency and IT investments are a prerequisite to start the digital journey. It is not so. Data needs to be generated and analyzed. 
by latest software technologies to make them work for your business. It is not so. Realizing return on investment as a long gestation period. It is not so. And just remember these four myths and partially I tried to bust them, but in half an hour time and uh, with a lot of uh, time delay now, I will not be able to do full justice, but keep in mind, these are all the myths which has to be broken. Managing our shop floors in MSMEs, where even the MSME department has sent a lot of lean consultants over the last 10 years to do 5As, Kaizen, TQM, TPM, TPM, TC, TPS, and so on and so forth, even including quality circles. Why we suddenly talk in terms of in digital, even Quality Council of India conducts many, many webinars on the digital lean, right? What is the transformation which is happening here? In traditional lean, you know, that quality through root cause analysis and corrective and preventive action, in my opinion, is a very passive approach. Whereas in proactive quality through dynamic and self-correcting cyber physical systems, we know it's not talked about, it requires a separate webinar and under the title called Quality 4.0, where Juran Institute is doing many, many work in America. And, and tomorrow uh, midnight, there is a there is a webinar by Juran Institute. I'll send it to Dr. Vinod. You can circle it all of you. Proactive quality, not after the problem is identified and after the root cause analyzed, Aram say Fishikawa diagram karo, fishbone diagram karo. Then we'll talk about a correcting and preventive action. By the time some more components are piled up with the same quality problem in the job shops and tier one, tier two companies. So this is a very important requirement. Number one parameter of the benefits of the industry is quality, quality, quality. Of course, after safety. I, that's why I put the safety as a top one. At the end of my presentation, I'll touch upon safety a little bit. The productivity through measurement of 16 losses of the Toyota system and including the waste through Kaizen movement is a traditional approach. But in the, in the digital approach, the OE improvement has to be seen instantaneously through connected machines. And one of the companies I visited in Chennai, they made a beautiful remark to me, sir, I want to monitor the OE of only a bottleneck machine and not the complete set of machines in the shop floor. Add shop to the gentleman, even in our MSMEs, let us start monitoring OE one machine at a time. Why should we look at the OE just because a digital consultant says, measure OE all over the company and pay me 10 lakh rupees, not required. And similarly, for faster response to pull through system, the just in time management system, as we talk about, or the lean concept, again, digital can make it play a big role. And as Pradeep sir mentioned, how the entire value chain is getting pulled in the, in the concept to the digital twin, and therefore tracking, including supply chain tracking, is possible in the modern eras. You may not be able to implement it, but you can be part of the implementation of an OEM company and receive them with a warm welcome. Sir, please include me in the supply chain, digital supply chain. You can tell your respective OEMs. And value chain linkages with the feedback already talked about is very important. Change in the digital era is become active and dynamic, not passive and static, but active and dynamic. This slide alone requires warrants a separate webinar. Dr. Vinod is making a note. Now, SME pragmatism. You know, when I was preparing this this Sunday, each slide is totally new. I prepared to, uh, for this webinar. I realized what is the pragmatism with which an SME should look at it. Yeah, You have to first discover what are the small pain points that you have. Then you make a small beginning in implementing step-by-step -step approach. Then you may do a scale-up in a, in, a, in, a, in a bigger way in your own plant. And if some of you, I know in a MSME center, the medium medium turnover enterprises have got more than one factory, right? And they do what is called a global scale. -up. Global doesn't mean international. It means going from one small factory or one small division or one small shop floor to the multiple shop floors. But the first step, ladies and gentlemen, is to discover, right? And there are many, many low hanging fruits. Some examples are given through my international research on this, yeah? Setup time reduction. I mentioned already the job shops are suffering on this. De bottleneck of the capacity. I talked about the, the most bottleneck machine where OE, OE can be monitored. Reduce the downtime of machine. We all talk about cycle time 10 millisecond, 20 second, 30 second, 40 second. But three hours the machine is breakdown, sir. 
in corona time the maintenance engineer is not even able to appear on the horizon reduce the line rejections is a, is a is a, is a, is the biggest evil of our msme sector sorry to mention don't get upset is a line rejections are still increasing in spite of the lean program done by the government in the last 10 years and most importantly our energy cost is highest in the world and the reduce energy consumption is a common problem across all the smes as well as the oem industry and i am sure this can be done through a continual improvement program let us make small steps to begin with and then as a confidence level builds up as a money is available to plow back then we can empower the operations team very very important one of the myths i talked about the it department has to come in no there are methods and tools and techniques available and cmta will bring it to your forum and empower operations team to identify and and drive the digital projects five years back the it team was driving which is why one of the reasons for slow adoption but the operations team when it start driving it becomes part of the team member of course cyber security and other things are very important we have to talk about very important thing which all of us keep talking is a return on investment payback period usme mera fayda fayda kya hai you know that kind of question and uh, there are many many case studies in india as well as abroad and a few touched upon few points here cost of quality plant efficiency energy efficiency business improvement projects i don't want to dwell each one of them we'll take only one example cost of quality cost of quality is the cost of the internal failure namely rejections etc and the external failure which is a warranty and the loss of customer etc etc and repairing at the customer place many time msmes go to the customer place to repair it so sad and you accumulate all this cost and put it as a potential saving and at least bring 10% down with each project you your small iot project will justify by itself not to speak of the remaining examples i can already tell you every example we can convert into money terms the iot consultants i request you please do not bombard them with jargons first talk them to them what is where is the money lost is it lost in quality is it lost in plant productivity is it lost in energy efficiency or is it lost even in the loss of orders i'm just moving faster because you know there is no point in dwelling we all be very tired now waiting to ask a few questions and small a smart factory of a large enterprise is a very classic where all machines are connected digital transformation lot of jargons we talk digital transformation end to end transformation horizontal integration vertical integration you put all of them you have to pass up some couple of crores even the large oems in india are not willing to cough up the couple of crores please understand one of the companies where i am advising i have done a brilliant work in caterpillar in blue star and bharat forge automotive axle but they took 5 years to convince them that yes they can do end to end digital transformation but even in those organization they started with one department at a time only what the large enterprises find it very interesting to do because in the industrial revolution they can get hello somebody is talking please wear your mask <laughs> once you wear your mask you stop talking perhaps right yeah the competitive advantages are the cutting edge technologies we have spoken in the last one and a half hours and global manufacturers are finding it very very important to do that therefore multinational corporations are in the large enterprises particularly or without any doubt are driving this particular movement but in the large enterprises implement autonomous and network smart factories which is a big word don't worry about it msmes forget about it yeah even i am getting into the jargons the advanced smart factory has got very high level of automation and very high level of digitalization including the internet enabled systems and above all the entire plant operation process including from the start of the simulation of the layout up to the execution and design to after sale service they are ready to do but the small and medium enterprise got two major concerns we all are familiar to that to realize this they are strong global competitors based on advanced technology and they know escape from that but they have weaker business oriented financial structures they are constantly worried about the repaying the bank loan for the emi for the next month right and the technical capabilities also they don't want to acquire in house even if somebody is willing to implement an iot project he says come implement and go back i don't want to hire 
a full time employee in my own place so the financial and technical constraints hinder the adoption of smart factories in small and medium enterprises therefore i want to recommend one of the appropriate smart factory now i am moving on to the very important part of my presentation is my recommendation to the small and medium enterprise and i think even the policy makers must be listening to me through cmti and dhi is to look at the four aspects of the small and medium enterprise let me drink some water now checking my time also the four aspects ladies and gentlemen are essential affordable simple and interoperable the small and medium enterprises have to consider and those consultants who are going into implement iot to them must consider these four aspects number one is essential essential refers to the composition of the technology to the level of essential functions of the equipment or processes that small and medium enterprise intend to adopt and higher than necessary specifications can lead to heavy systems with high cost i don't want to burden them with very high technology let us identify that the least requirement of technology to be start to begin with and then it is not common to all the small and medium enterprise already as i mentioned we need to identify already as i mentioned we need to identify the mobile phone in his car so we must be disabled by the organizers please organizers have the ability to disable people who disturb the webinars i am not proceeding further unless they are disabled Mr. Atul is speaking. Mr. Atul is speaking. Please have yeah. respect to the audience as well as to the speaker, please. So, uh, yeah, we are on behalf of CMTI. We are requesting, uh, you know, all people except the speaker to mute uh, your microphone. It is uh, creating disturbances, and such a you know important talk is going on. So please uh, mute yourself. Okay. Yeah, please. Yeah, Sir, you can I go ahead. Mr. Atul is not listening. He is on his own. Atul table. is speaking. Yeah. Uh, Uh, I'm not proceeding further. A uh, very important recommendation, but I'm not proceeding further. We have to disable such people. I think, sir, he has muted. I think he has been muted. So, can kindly proceed now. Organizer should be alert to every speaker now, every yes, participant. Yes, sir. Yes. Sometimes we have to be very strict, Doctor Vinod. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The second major aspect is affordability, which we spoke many, many. Uh, in many many forums is is it adaptable to the company's finances each company is its own level of affordability and the cost effectiveness is a return on investment i talked about and that should not be done as a company wide roi calculation it should be per function and per benefit being earned it should be easy to install i am talking about the simple parameter easy to install easy to maintain and easily operated by the operator this is the most important point i remember even in my makino days when uh, company tpm track installed one device and went in the year 2005 it remained as an orphan for many years why because it was easy to install because <laughs> it was installed by the supplier and today the same tpm track has gone across the country more than 10000 20000 installations why they made it easy to install they made it easy to maintain and they made it easily operated by the operator for small and medium enterprises they don't have the capacity to recruit people and i am told by my uh, good friend in maxbyte that they implemented to many msmes and, and i'll talk about that package they implemented and what they have done is they made it existing operator friendly existing maintenance friendly existing management friendly devices and software and the last but not the least is interoperability here i am not talking about what akatech university and dr vinod mentioned i am talking about the foundation of our legacy systems if one software is introduced in brand 1 of a machine tool as a trial and another software is introduced by brand 2 of a machine tool and third one by brand 3 in a machine tool or even quality equipment it is be a disaster for the small and medium enterprises the data must be interchangeable between the systems in the factory and components and interchangeable in the factory as they are proceeding with one project at a time 
I talked about the discovery model and discover uh, first pilot project, scale up project, then global scale up project. So essential, affordable, simple, and interoperable are the most important considerations when we are going into the MSM. To illustrate the aspect of this. Number one is appropriate smart sensors, appropriate IoT edge devices. I request CMTAs to do a lot of in-depth work on these aspects. If there are 20 sensors available in the market, CMTA can recommend which are the low-cost sensors and which is good enough for capturing the data. Good enough for capturing the data. I will illustrate this example. Small data processing as opposed to the big data process. I think the word big data should be removed, should be removed from our lexicon of this, of the in Indian uh, smart manufacturing uh, domain. In my opinion, it is useful for healthcare industry. It is useful for retail industry. It is used for all service sectors. We have absolutely because millions of people are involved, but ladies and gentlemen, it is no more applicable to the manufacturing subsystem and certainly not to the MSME sector that we are talking about. There are examples of small data processing and appropriate vision based monitoring. I will illustrate this. Flexible automation using Kobos. I may exceed time, apologize. And AR for remote monitoring of shop maintenance and field service. I will just take few minutes for each of the six topics. The most important thing when it comes to the sensors, use of highly specified ultra precision vibration sensors are not required. In the process of muting somebody, even I have been muted. Thank you, Co host should never be muted. Multi Dr. Narayan is up. Morning, sir. The use of highly specified ultra precision vibration sensors are not required to monitor machine tool vibration unless it is used to check the component accuracy and therefore the vibration of the spindle is going to affect the component accuracy. But if you are measuring the vibration, not for the quality of the workpiece, but to identify the trend in the process, how it is deteriorating, and only as an intermediate sensitivity level is required to prevent the generation of defective products, then it is not absolutely required to purchase and install highly specified vibration sensors. And this case study I took from a South Korean. Uh, example which I will share in the form of an article and I acknowledge them at the end of my presentation. Many, many examples in the way you collect them. Of course, even sensors can be printed by special technologies. Sir, your voice is low, sir. I think they unmuted me and muted and. How is it now? No, yes, sir. Better. Sir. Yeah, please don't unmute me next time. Don't mute me next time. See, you can have sensors. In fact, CMTA has got a nanotechnology lab. You can bring in sensors which has got multiple functions. At the same time, very, very low cost through certain processes. And there is a case study available. I don't want to get into the details. Coming to the same example. You don't have to put everything into the uh, mega uh, server based systems. Low cost computing devices at the edge level are available. Arduino is one example. I know in call size, I've done wireless communication modules for measuring and transmitting to the respective computers. With the vernier caliper and even micrometer already Bluetooth enabled. And there are many, many examples in the country where Bluetooth enabled systems have played a big role. Low cost small computers can be implemented and IoT devices can be manufactured, which can collect the data and communicate the characteristics with the 
without expensive equipment at all. Another is using surrogate measurement. Surrogate measurement. My friends in MaxBite have done it. The power consumption measurement is an indirect measurement of many other parameters in a machine tool which is good enough to monitor trends and take corrective action. All this can be brought into the category of the small data processing rather than big data processing. There is a case study where in the, in the sewing machine industry, I know the government of India is looking at uh, having a 14 day lockdown for garment industry. We made a representation yesterday to not they lock them down unless the manpower exceeds 30 to 50 percent. But in sewing machine industry, you can introduce uh, IoT devices to in a small data processing at a very low cost to monitor the production during this lockdown also. And moving vision based monitoring. This is an example where appropriate vision based monitoring for legacy and machine tools have been done in Korea, South Korea. What have they done here? Example of low cost web and the, the modern webcams are very expensive to collect it and then it transmit data through the internet. No need for the small and medium enterprise. And these vision systems are developed to digitize manufacturing data and displayed on monitors of old machine tools and transmit them to the database. And to ensure SMEs can accept the technology without a significant financial burden, low cost webcams and small computers are used to monitor the status of the older machine and for mobile devices such as smartphones and tablets. And last but not least, appropriate and flexible automation. Dr. Vinod talked about the Kobos. Collaborative robo. You can see the lady is even wearing a sari and operating because it is absolutely safe. Unlike a robo, which of course has got its own place in the modern industry, which is caged and unsafe to operate when you go inside the cage. Large enterprises can afford the robos. I think the smaller enterprises should move more and more into the robos. Even our Tata company, there is a uh, there is a company in Pune which has started manufacturing robos. You can start with that and before you go into the expensive universal robo coming from Denmark. Not only affordable, but ensure social distancing between the man and another man in an assembly line. Between two men or women, there is a Kobo in between. And it enables partial automation, which is low cost compared to company wide automation. It also enables to for a quick redeployment when the product line changes in a job shop. A job shop is always producing different parts at different points in time in a day or in a, in a week or in even in a month. Quick redeployment and flexible redeployment can be done with the use of a Kobo. And it is democratized to the lowest level operator. There is no need to learn a program. And the, even if you want to learn, it is so easy and it can uh, be taken over by the respective operator. You don't need an expensive programmer to be appointed by the small and uh, medium enterprises. There are at least 100 case studies of universal robo in this country, which, is, uh, which illustrates all these things. I think last month you had a webinar on this. And last but not least is remote monitoring is extremely important for small and medium enterprises. My friend uh, talked about augmented reality, both Siemens and Dr. Vinod sir. And it is going to be very, very useful for training an unskilled operator. It is very, very useful for remote assembly line guidance. It is very, very useful for servicing a field equipment even in a remote place. Imagine during the COVID lockdown, an expert can remain at home or in a central office and he can guide the other people in or ordinary people, even an unskilled operator to maintain his own equipment. So not only COVID has accelerated its adoption, even in a non-COVID or a post-COVID period, it is going to be very, very useful for small and medium enterprise to have augmented reality you don't need the goggles to be worn like this. An ordinary tablet or a mobile phone enabled software is enough. And a parametric technology and other people have launched low cost software to implement it. And in for training purposes, for assembly line purposes, maintenance in shop floor, as well as 
repairs at the field. To summarize my presentation, in a general smart can afford to have the entire gamut of 10 technologies and entire functionalities as we even talked about, but a small and medium enterprise cannot afford. So they have to look at essential, affordable, simple, interoperable concepts, as I already mentioned, and appropriate monitoring through sensors, appropriate IoT devices, small data processing rather than big data processing, and uh, very, very important is combining automation with low cost automation or non automation, which we call the hybridization processes. And depending upon how you select these particular technologies to the small and medium enterprise, it becomes the just the essential functions, affordable functions, simple to install, maintain and operate. And remember, as you scale up the benefits from one stage to another, the interoperability becomes extremely important to remember. Therefore, do not jump into implementing with multiple solutions coming from multiple platforms. I want to leave with one of the companies I'm advising called MaxBite have implemented a small MSME package as we are talking, right? And this company is sending a small box like an Amazon parcel that you receive, which has got a hardware containing the minimum sensors required for three minimum popular applications. One application is production OEE analytics. Another is digital maintenance. And third is energy analytics. OEE itself captures quality, productivity, and uptime guarantee of machines. So there are three benefits inside the OEE. And digital maintenance and energy analytics. There are totally five applications in the form of three apps. And the three apps are sent across in the form of a cloud based solution with full cyber security assured. Moment you say cloud internet, people are worried about security. All of us are having apps in our mobile phone and it asks, hello, 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 we allow it. And we still worry about cyber security. Right? And to begin with, they have a 500 rupee or 499 package, but there are discounts available, volume discounts, depending upon the number of equipment that you connect. This package is per machine per month. And depending upon the volume of equipment that you connect over a period of time and other methodologies, there are discounts available to attract as low as going 299 rupees per month per package. And these three applications are good enough for a small and medium enterprise to start with. And I think these kind of startup companies who have matured, the same company also done Caterpillar, Blue Star, Bharat Forge, Automotive Axle. And they are also industry partner with the CMTI, which is why I took the liberty to mention these companies. So these kind of packages, ladies and gentlemen, are launched and they also have an IoT device factory. That is a warehouse. So they have all the devices ready with them, including sensors required for these three applications. So the software and the hardware, the software is called the Byte Factory, which has got solutions under manufacturing, solutions under design, and solutions under after sales service. So that means horizontally integrated in the complete value chain. And they have an excellent uh, background of people who left plum jobs with 15 years experience. And now they have the open branch in America, England, and Middle East. They are a Coimbatore based Indian company, Atma Nirbar Bharat kind of a company. The last but not the least safe of the medium enterprise. Whenever we introduce these kind of concepts, beware of safety and lock, safety locks for the equipment should not be disabled neither by the company nor by the consultant. And since I come from machine tool background of Bakino and Starak, I know how important is a safety interlocks of the machine tools and equipment. And additional vision monitoring can be implemented because safety is not only safe condition, but also safe action. Safe condition is by locking, safe action by vision monitoring. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for patiently listening to my presentation. And our focus has to be small and medium enterprises, which constitute 70 to 80% of the manufacturing system of Indian 
subcontinent. Thank you very much. My email ID and phone numbers are available to Dr. Vinod. And I acknowledge International Journal of Precision Engineering and Manufacturing, latest edition 2021, which has published a beautiful case study from South Korea. Thank you, sir. Okay, yeah. Thank you, sir. I think, uh, uh, Narendra, I think. Uh, uh, yeah. Thank you uh, so much for uh, uh, insights on Industry 4.0 and also the benefiting to SME industries. Now I request. Uh, Participants, if you have any important questions to be asked, you can ask to our uh, speaker. Uh, uh, Narendra, let us see the chat box first. I think uh, directly uh, people talking, uh, I think time will not permit. So uh, okay. chat box, if any question is there, we'll take up first. Hello, Hello Chandra Mauli, sir. Is this uh, Professor Chandra Mauli? I'm audible. Yeah. Just speaking, go ahead, sir. Yeah, uh, yeah, actually, you right. Uh, uh, rightly said that uh, the Indian contributions of the Indian MSME is uh, very much in the GDP, but the CAGR of these companies are very very less. Like Indian company CAGR is comparatively very less than American company. Like uh, American company produced 25 percent of CAGR, but Indian companies could not able to, and uh, they could able to find patents 300, 350 patents in smart manufacturing, but Indian, but Indian institute could able to do 30. Uh, 35 in this area. But can you please throw some light on why these difference has been like? Well, it is beyond today's topic. So normally I would like to refrain from this point. But we are a developing nation. Is a present continuous change. We have been developing from 1947. But having said that, our manufacturing ratio of the GDP is only 10 to 15 percent. It further got eroded during COVID. We have to do what is required for our medium and small enterprises and it has nothing to do with comparing ourselves with the American corporations. Thank you, sir. Yeah, uh, I'm Ganesh Suryan Shivarya from Godrej, Mumbai. Uh, my question is related to uh, the data which gets created during uh, uh, from IoT because IoT devices capturing data throughout the day and maybe uh, 24 by 7 so that data management becomes the challenge so do you have you made any arrangement maybe in your organization i'm talking to mr chandra mauli who's from tata so he has shown some or maybe person from cms they, they can also pick up this so how that data management is done uh, the data which is collected from IoT. i will mention briefly then uh, mr v mr pradeep and vinod can add to this See, it's a very straightforward thing. The data is there already. Even before Industry 4.0 was born, all our CNC machines, for example, had CNC controller with all the production and maintenance and alarm data. The only thing which did not happen at that time is to collect and compile the data in a format which is palatable for describing, diagnosing, predicting, and prevent and uh, prescribing and preventing. Now, the data visualization through data advanced analytics are available. Algorithms have been designed for predictive analytics also. But to begin with, small and medium enterprises to start capturing the data and doing minimum analytics for describing what is happening. How my Ola car has it started from the uh, previous command? As a Ola car coming towards my house, as a Ola car reached my house. That's all required by the small and medium entities. Why the Ola car did not come on time? What happened in between? Did he have a breakdown? Is a next step called the diagnostic aspect. And then will the Ola car now onwards always be delayed by another 20 minutes? Is a prediction aspect. So I think my point is in the manufacturing subsystem, small and medium enterprises can improve, underline the word improve, only when we know what is happening in the shop floors. Today, I can tell you 80% of the MSMEs do not have an idea of what is happening in the shop floor, especially in the second shift and the third shift. This IoT devices throwing up the data and analyzing in the visualization, you can have it in the mobile phone and see whether your production is aspect track. So we as per track, your quality measurements are as per track, 
and above all the down time of the machines is it as per track thank you thank mr chandra mulli yeah Every question I am converting into MS Ms. Ah, uh, I would I would like to add one point over here. The, the three apps, sorry sir, the three apps I mentioned from MaxByte, they are already downloadable apps like you do any app in your own mobile phone, like Arogya Setu, whatever you did. The same thing you did for OE monitoring, maintenance monitoring, and the third one is of course uh, about the. Um, Energy monitoring. Just three apps. Analytics already gone. You don't have to worry about analytics. Small and medium enterprise should not do the analytics, but utilize the analyzed information in the form of graphical and visualization to take corrective and preventive action. That's all. Sir, uh, we have uh, one question uh, from. Uh... There is a number in Indian MSME. How do you find the scope of Industry 4.0 implementation considering ground level limitations? It's, it's, it's at a very low level. It's a very low level because we frighten them with jargon. Yes. I've done 20 webinars in the last one year, and I, the first caution I give to my co-speakers is that give them mundane things. Which they understand on a day-to-day -day basis, and then slowly the adoption and adoption will take place. Even the little bit has happened because of the revolution which has happened in the social platform, like the Ola car and the Swiggy and Zomato. Otherwise, as our Siemens friend said, 15 years back we had all this in Siemens. Why it did not happen even in Germany, in the middle stand and small and medium enterprise middle stand companies in Germany? Because of the same reason of creating awareness was not there even in Europe until 2015. And uh, there is another question. I am from uh, machine automation programming field, and mostly we use uh, ladder logic programming. But implementing IoT application requires high-level programming. How to overcome this problem for in-house implementing and for OEMs? Doctor Vinod will be in the best position to answer this. Yeah, uh, uh, I think if you see his question, I think uh, they they are ex explaining their situation in that you know what they are, they are there and uh, this uh, and they are worried about this high level programming and all. Uh, so uh, they need not have to. I don't think uh, that uh, they need to do this high level programming themselves and all. So uh, depending upon the asset, what they have and the type of uh, that hardware, uh, that may be PLC and all that what they have. Uh, there are people, uh, including CMTI, can help them to identify what needs to be done. So it is not that uh, everything, uh, uh, everybody has to do that. So uh, there are plenty of work done by different organizations, and uh, people can make use of that. Uh, so that is there. So we can right, approach CMTI right. this one also, and we can help them. Absolutely right. There are more than ten thousand startups in this country. Leave the job of creating programming to them. The small and medium enterprise, my friend tells me, requires only an electrician or a mechatronics engineer to implement the apps that he is going to give in the MSME package. It does not require an IoT expert or a digital expert. Leave the programming to the 10,000 startups, not to speak of the large corporations like CMT. Yeah. Uh, Narendra, is there any uh, further questions in the chat box? Yeah, there is a question, sir. What methods are industries adopting to link industry institute interaction other than training to enable students to have uh, recent trends? Okay. Very good. Maybe I can take this question on behalf yeah, of Tata, please. Tata yeah. Institute of Skills and other skill platforms which I am representing. The, our first focus is the fresh students coming out of the colleges. For that matter, when I define college, it need not be graduate engineering. Graduate engineering, diploma, and even ITIs should go through fundamentals of factory automation and fundamentals of smart manufacturing. And short courses, one week to four weeks, are available. Just as we are talking, it's going to be rolled out very soon. And similarly, there are many, many forums and many, many organizations are rolling out 
several training programs to the organization i have been to psg college 2 years back fantastic work going on there in introducing smart short courses for the students who are passing out and even online self learning e learning systems are available with companies like festo smc siemens 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 um citrain i think pradeep is listening he may talk about citrain yes um, and uh, my friend uh, sachin banshali uh, from siemens and mr shankar narayanan all are doing many 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 small programs and they have done it in 65 locations across india so if you put together all these people i forgot to mention schneider and fanuk and so if you add up all these people the amount of work going on in training the college students is immense but i want to add upskilling existing employees is also going on parallelly the syllabus is slightly different the pre qualification requirements are slightly different industry institute interface is also one of the major projects of bangalore chamber of industry and commerce my good friend dr k n subramanya from rv college he is a head of this committee called industry institute interface and i request dr vinod and his team to join that industry institute interface which is doing a fantastic work in the last couple of years yeah of course sir i think uh, cmk also we are uh, putting up experimental learning center where we are uh, one part we are looking into uh, that uh, for academy academics uh, industry ready uh, uh, engineers actually what we call actually like uh, the fresher final year students and also we'll definitely be in touch with you and um, uh, bcic uh, regarding that sir. no i want you to be the committee member yeah so of course we, we did several programs for the colleges or we call it bms college yeah. Yeah, you know, and uh, now we have to take it to the diploma and the ITIs. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll definitely, sir. We'll definitely, uh, you know, it will honor for us to be part of uh, such type of. Uh, the reason uh, is, I believe, the industry 4.0 is by and large still in the research domain, and therefore the institutes have a very large role to play, more than the industry. True, sir. True, true. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Next question. Uh, so, uh, Narendra, I think uh, now because we are running a sort of time and. Uh, so if any one last question uh, and then we can conclude there is like there it. is something which is typed by mr londe yeah sir you can take if, uh, i think uh, can narendra yeah. explain that yeah okay narendra can you uh, see that there is a question from professor rehman rehman okay yes yeah, yeah. Uh, when talking about the technology pillars speakers yeah. are mentioning additive manufacturing as one of the technology pillar yeah, however yeah. Uh, not mention about uh, subtractive manufacturing which is uh, machining yeah uh, <laughs> 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 it's something like ek uh, <laughs> hindi mein diye ke tale uh, i think uh, below that uh, you know uh, diya there will be andhera so that is by default subtractive manufacturing we have been working so definitely uh, that's all so it no, is I will, i will take this question i will yes, take sir. this question <laughs> yes sir i read a book in canada instead of instead of biting the metal you are biting the bites right uh, digital manufacturing in its original form is not the smart manufacturing we are talking today in its original form of digital manufacturing like siemens nx etc he is talking about how to convert the cad cam program directly into manufacture so in that context both subtractive machining and additive manufacturing or using the cad cam program either by a metal deposition method as in additive manufacturing or in cutting metal as in 3 axis 4 axis 5 axis machine tool but today why additive manufacturing is included in the industry 4.0 because the mckinsey's of the world would like to have all the new technologies under one umbrella so it is yeah. by sheer accident and therefore yeah. don't get that's why i said in the beginning the two pillars of automation and digital transformation automation including additive manufacturing etc belong even to the industry 3.0 era the plastic additive manufacturing was there from our uh, rapid prototyping period 1970s 1980s only the metal additive has happened recently yeah, yeah. so thank you i think is uh, any uh, question pending i think we will not be able to take up uh, more than one more question so I think uh, everybody is yeah. Sir, uh, they are asking about uh, this Juran Institute quality management. There is uh, a partner. They wanted that uh, details. I will send the link. Yeah, yeah. But so sir has already mentioned away. that he will be sharing the link, and yes. we'll be in turn will share. 
will the yes. all the will share yes. with all participants yes. okay it's a free webinar right. and yeah. uh, i also yeah. done a lot of work on quality 4.0 another day if cmt is organizing if they are ready to give me a master class time for 2 hours and yeah. we will do a quality 4.0 not webinar master class for yes, cmt and its uh, and its members we can do a joint program with cmti and bangalore chamber and uh, so that you know i owe an allegiance to my original chamber of commerce namely bangalore chamber of industry and commerce but very very important point is it is in the midnight around 11:30 yeah, yeah. it is not in our our uh, zone time, time. Yeah, yeah. please keep awake yeah. so uh, yeah definitely i think we will uh, share with all participants so now i think uh, uh, i hope that uh, the this uh, uh, webinar has been useful and uh, uh, we continue to conduct uh, many uh, more webinars uh, maybe cmti as well dcic and other people also uh, for benefit of msme so definitely uh, it is a uh, you know the learning as well as you know that uh, this uh, knowledge this investment will is a continuing it is not a end so definitely uh, we look forward for uh, sharing more information as and when uh, it is con convenient to for us and all and available to us so i like to thank uh, on behalf of cmti and uh, uh, also on behalf of uh, uh, smddc smart manufacturing uh, development development cell and also on behalf of samarth udyog platform i like to thank all the you know, speakers uh, to sparing time and uh, sharing their views um, of course uh, dr Chandra Mali is uh, very known to us, and he is helping also in many things. Not and Pradeep, not 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 yeah, he is also our uh, PRMC, uh, the Project uh, Review and Monitoring uh, Committee member, also for smart manufacturing. And uh, Mr. Pradeep, I think he has been very useful uh, for all the time. In the very less time, he is uh, you know he comes forward and helps us in many of these our uh, queries and all. So. and uh, also like to thank all the participants you know that i think uh, you know participating actively uh, interacting and uh, also barring some small events and all keeping uh, themselves calm <laughs> muted so thank you all and uh, look, looking forward uh, again uh, for uh, uh, talking to you again and uh, like to thank all or everybody uh, including my colleagues and all who has uh, you know put up time to make this i have shared i have yeah. shared my email id and phone number there Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Try to avoid phone, phone, but first send a mail. So, uh, thank you all, and uh, uh, and wish you all the best in your venture. And if you have any questions, probably uh, regarding this uh, implementation, uh, uh, you know, for MSME or any MSME, they can approach any of the support staff center, and uh, including CMTI, and to help them one is to one. So, with this, uh, we like to conclude, and thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. 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 Thank you, Yeah, we will share it, sir. We will share it. Those uh, filled, those who fill the feedback forms, you will be getting uh, in uh, one or two weeks' time. You will be getting it, sir. Okay. Hello. Uh, where are those uh, feedback forms? Oh, it will come. Yeah. No, no, sir. We have provided the link. Uh, uh, one more time, I'll uh, share the link. Please click yeah, on. Yeah, sir. It. Thank you, sir. Uh, like this type of webinar you conduct, sir. Yeah, we are frequently conducting. Uh, we wanted your yeah, active yeah, yeah, participation. Sir. If you, if we get more participation, we'll be happy to do this kind of. Uh, sir, one more thing, sir. I, hmm. I have uh, turned around uh, six hundred webinars, sir. International yeah, internet yeah. webinar. Yeah, last you year. Have, I think you have mentioned it uh, last time also. It uh, congratulations for that. Yes, yes. Selected for international book of records, sir. Oh, great. Yes. So also our uh, brick, uh, I'm doing three years uh, uh, senior research fellow in brick, sir. So that okay. got uh, patent also selected, sir. Okay, okay, great. Uh, also in that I attempted one more world record, sir, fastest brick making. Uh huh. Okay. So, hi, uh, sir. Hello. Uh, somebody is trying to talk. Yeah, go ahead. Sir, actually, when I ask a question regarding the upskilling of uh, existing uh, automation program. Uh, You are suggesting like uh, purchasing the already developed by some startups or uh, big companies. 
Upskilling, upskilling we are trying to do, no sir. That is what uh, CMTA we are... Uh,